Hello, hello, welcome to the video. So as some of you are probably aware already, I am someone very much obsessed with the Cryptid Cats of Australia, primarily the Alien Big Cats, or ABCs for short, which have also been reported in other countries, with Bryn probably being the most famous. Two things of Australian Big Cat lore that have been questions for a long time is where have these cryptids come from, and what species is behind the sightings. In their book on the subject, Michael Williams and Rebecca Lang include several pages on possible candidates behind the sightings, which can be found in Chapter 13, Big Cat Noir. On, yes I'm still calling it Twitter, a page I follow called Australian Feral Mega Cats has been somewhat vocal about feral cats evolving to great size and has said these are the culprits behind the ABC sightings on several occasions. They also left a comment on one of my videos saying that feral cats explain the ABC sightings in Australia. In this video I'll be going over the evidence for and against the idea that the sightings can be explained as nothing but feral cats which have grown to significant size. This video will then consider which is more possible of being the case based on said evidence for and against either side of the argument. We'll start with the pro-feral cats side and then look at the against feral cats argument. I will admit I might be a bit biased for the side saying the panthers are in fact panthers, but I'll make sure to remain neutral and for those wanting to fact check me, all the research material is listed below. Arguments for the feral cat theory. Starting with the side for the feral cat hypothesis, we do have some pretty strong arguments for feral cats being behind the sightings. The first one being the timing of the first sightings and the timing of the arrival of feral cats. According to a quick Google search, cats first arrived with European settlers in the 18th century. Meanwhile, according to page 302 of Carl Schrieker's 2020 book, one of the things that causes the World War II US airmen theory to come crashing down is that sightings of ABCs have occurred as early as the 1880s. Feral cats had already been established in Australia by that point, meaning the timing lines up better than the US Airman theory. And not just that, but according to page 184 of Out of the Shadows by Tony Healy and Paul Cropper, it appears that ABCs are unknown to the Aboriginals. The reported footprints of the big cats, more on that later, differ a lot from what the marsupial lion is believed to have left. This means, going off of Out of the Shadows at least, the big cats can't possibly be Phylacaleo carnifex as believed by some, and are most likely a more recent resident to the country. Malcolm Smith also notes in Bunyips and Bigfoots, updated 2nd edition, pages 185 to 187, that the generalisations made by journalist John Higgins about the alien big cat behaviour in Australia clearly spells out cat. And when going over the possibility of it being a marsupial on pages 194 to 195, he states the behaviour is too cat-like to not be a cat. Although marsupials have shown great feats of convergent evolution, Smith explains that most of these are cases of overall body structure, not behaviour. Probably the best pieces of evidence for it being feral cats behind the sightings is that giant sizes for feral cats have been reported. On page 86 of Out of the Shadows, Tony Healy and Paul Cropper say that, at the time of them writing the book at least, the areas of the Simpson and Gibson deserts had consistent reports of large feral cats. Some of these cats were said to be twice the height of your average cat and a metre long excluding the tail. According to page 201 of the second edition of Bunyips and Bigfoots, the tails of house cats are between 30 to 60% the head and body length. This means that these metre long Simpson and Gibson cats are around 1.3 to 1.6 metres including the tail when scaling up from your typical house cat. Probably the greatest piece of evidence in terms of how big these cats are getting is the Kurt Angle cat also referred to as the Gippsland Big Cat. This cat was a big boy in bold, italicised and underlined all capital text. And I mean big. Like I said on my yes I'm still calling it Twitter page, this thing's at the size where it could take a child if it wanted to. As the story goes according to the introduction to the sixth chapter of Australian Big Cats, in May of 2005, Kurt Angle was out deer hunting and stumbled across a footprint, thinking it might be a dingo's until he saw it had no claw marks. According to Angle, he began getting a tingling sensation up the back of his neck and head and knew there must be a cat in the area. After trekking around for a further 10 or 15 minutes, he saw a face staring back at him through the bush before the owner came rushing towards him and then veering off to his left. He unslung his rifle when it came charging towards him and when it veered off, he timed its strides before firing two 7mm reinforced forced rounds at it, which had 50% more grain than usual. The high power of the rounds Engel was using resulted in the damage you can see done to its head. 
Angle reportedly pressed down on the palm of its paws, which was about half the size of his hand, and the claws came out at over an inch in length. Angle was most surprised by the size of the cat overall, believing it to have been 2 meters when he first saw it, though when he later measured it, it was a little shorter at 1.85 meters. Kurt Angle would later dump the body in a nearby river after getting several photos with a disposable camera, but kept the 60 centimeter tail as a trophy. Fire a friend. Engel's cat would make news headlines and the front cover of Australian Shooter magazine. DNA testing would later confirm it to be a feral cat, and people would later make claims the Gippsland Panther had been killed. According to the Guinness World Records' website, the longest domestic cat was roughly 123 centimeters long. Meanwhile, where light meets dark calculated the length of Engel's cat to be 1.7 to 1.76 meters. This means Engel's cat, based on these estimations, was 47 to 53 centimeters longer than what the Guinness World Records recognizes as the largest cat. Or was it really as big as believed? According to pages 202 to 203 of the second edition of Bunyips and Bigfoots, British cat enthusiast Sarah Hartwell, who runs the website MessyBeast.com, would make the following claim. Reading straight from the article she wrote, quote, A supposed big cat, Black Panther, in Dargo, Gippsland, Australia, was shot by a Melbourne deer hunter named Kurt Engel, who claimed the 1.5 meter, 6 foot, 35 kilo cat had charged him. As with many photos, the cat is in the foreground and perspective makes it appear larger in proportion to the hunter. The body was photographed and disposed of, but the apparently 600 millimeter tail, 26 inches, was sent for DNA testing at Monash University and shown to be a feral domestic cat. The tail was sent without vertebrae and could have included extra fur from the back which makes accurate size estimations difficult. A cat's tail is normally 30 centimeters, 12 inches. The partially decomposed carcass was examined by a Rural Lands Protections Board vet, Dr. Keith Hart, in 2006. The body was 34 inches long, just under 3 feet, and the tail 14 inches, 48 inches total length. Even considering the state of decomposition, this is substantially smaller than the size claimed by Angle. Although the measured size is within the size range of the smallest subspecies of leopard, Panthera pardus nanopardus of Somalia, the occurrence of an abnormally sized individual does not indicate the Australian feral cats are mutating into leopard-sized predators. A pet Maine Coon was recorded as reaching 49 inches, 121 centimeters total length, equaling the Gippsland specimen size, and tails of 13 to 14 inches have been recorded in domestic cats. This might sound like Kurt Angle's cat wasn't as big as it was reported to be, however, there's some flaws with what Sarah claims here. The first one I think should be pointed out is the date of 2006 when Dr. Keith Hart supposedly measured the cat. Kurt Angle dumped the body in a river in May of 2005, and the only thing retrieved of it was the tail when he was right about to dump it. As far as I am aware, no attempt was made to retrieve the body of the cat, and if they fished it out of the river in 2006, it'd be in a worse state than partially decomposed. Second, according to page 115 of Australian Big Cats, Melbourne Museum biologist Rory O'Brien stated the last few centimeters of the tail had the last two quote-unquote caudal vertebrae, which I believe by that they meant caudal vertebrae or tail vertebrae. Either way, this implies the tail wasn't lacking vertebrae, as Miss Hartwell claims. The third and main point that discredits this claim from Sarah entirely is what Malcolm Smith includes in his book on page 203, and that's that Dr. Keith Hart's jurisdiction is far away from Gippsland, Victoria, where the Kurt Angle cat was shot, with Dr. Keith Hart actually working in New South Wales. As a result, Smith would write to Dr. Hart, asking him about this article from Sarah Hartwell, and Dr. Hart would respond saying that you can't trust everything on the internet. Smith states the only reason he brings this up is because, at the time of him writing the second edition of Bunyips and Bigfoots in 2021, that piece of misinformation was still on the internet. And at the time of writing this video in December of 2023, that piece of misinformation is still on the internet. If anyone knows how to contact Sarah, I recommend you tell her to take down the article, or at least edit the part on the Kurt Angle cat. With that out of the way, according to page 192 of the second edition of Bunyips and Bigfoots, Paul Cropper in 1997 would also come across a supposed black panther skin and believed it to be nothing more than a feral cat. It too had a tail of about 60 centimeters in length, meaning Kurt Angle's cat might not be a one-off freak, nor or only locked to one state. Engel shot his cat in Victoria. The skin Cropper examined, dubbed the Roman Sager skin, was shot by father and son Roma and Tom Sager in New South Wales. Carl Schuker proposes in his book, Mystery Castle Revisited, pages 298 to 299, 
that Evolution might have created a strain of large black feral cats and points out that some of these black panthers reported in the media don't look like actual black leopards, nor do they look like jaguars or pumas, but more closely resemble domestic cats of large size. He also states other parts of the world, such as Hawaii, New Zealand, continental Europe and America, have reported similar animals, meaning it could be a mutation happening worldwide. Now, with all this evidence, you'd think there'd be nothing to contradict the idea of feral cats are behind the sightings, weren't you? To which I say, you're absolutely wrong, and let's move on to the arguments against ferals being behind the sightings. Arguments against the feral cat theory. I know there will be some who will cry something something misidentification, and yeah, you got a point. However, hundreds into the thousands of alien big cat reports are on file. Tony Healy and Paul Cropper on page 57 of Out of the Shadows state they had over 1,000 report sightings on file from between 1885 and 1994, and that's just two blokes. According to Australian Big Cats, page 33, in 2004, a woman by the name of Chris Coffey had 180 sightings on record, but they'd later go to over 450 sightings, or 2.5 times what it was previously. There's also an appendix in the book that includes dozens of sightings, and when quickly skimming through it, I counted 83 sightings listed, and this is without going into all the reports listed throughout the main contents of the book itself. With around 1,500 reports on file, it's hard to conclude that it's just ferals when you consider several elements of these sightings. Referencing page 33 again, multiple witnesses who've claimed to have seen the cats have had experience with big cats or lived in countries where they are native. One man by the name of Goth Wos was a private zookeeper who owned a puma, lion, lioness and a black panther and he had claimed to have seen one of the alien big cats himself. According to page 188 of Bunyips and Bigfoot's updated second edition, Wos would have thought it was his panther if he didn't know it was locked up. I'd also like to point out that roughly over a quarter of Australia's households own at least one cat. The reason I bring this up is for the same reason I brought up Goth Wos's report, and that's that, if Wos has had a lot of experience with three different species of big cat, we can logically assume he'd be best at identifying those cats in the bush compared to your average person. Meanwhile, in my best Ben Shapiro impression, so let's say, hypothetically, I own a cat, and I spend a lot of time with said cat, and get a decent idea of the general domestic cat body plan. And that, for the sake of the argument, I'm walking through the bush, and I see a large, feline creature walk out in front of me. I think we can logically assume, based on the facts at hand, that I'll be able to distinguish whether or not it is a feral cat or a leopard. I am never doing that again. According to the Wikipedia page, for the estimated number of guns in civilian hands per country, Australia ranks 51st at 14.5 guns per 100 people. A good chunk of these people would be, or were at some point, hunters, and would be used to native and invasive animals. So when hunters report seeing a big cat, I think the feral cat option can be ruled out, since they'd be used to seeing feral cats. Pages 81 to 82 of Out of the Shadows records two cases of people shooting at these animals, and there's been several other times this has happened throughout history. Kurt Engel's cat and the Roman Sega skin are also only two specimens. It's believed there's over a dozen million ferals in Australia, meaning that unless a survey is conducted in the areas these two specimens were found, it's hard to know how common exactly these large, monochrome specimens are. And even then, it should be remembered sightings of alien big cats have been reported across the entire continent of Australia, not just in New South Wales and Victoria, although I will admit those other states with the most sightings overall. No doubt large, monochrome ferals do exist, but I don't believe it's widespread and common enough to account for all sightings. Tony Healy and Paul Cropper mention on page 87 of Out of the Shadows they've seen two or three pictures of skins of supposedly large ferals, but skins can be stretched by 30% or more during the drying process, so they are skeptical of said skins. Some might bring up the Simpson and Gibson desert cats mentioned earlier, but barely anyone lives in those areas, and quite a majority of the reports of ABCs, as previously stated, come from Victoria and New South Wales. Neither desert is in those states, with the Gibson desert being on the other side of the country and the Simpson being closer to the middle. Another point to be made is colour. Most of these feral cats aren't black, but the typical tabby coloration cats revert to when they become feral. Even though I don't get out much, I'd also like to mention that out of all the stray cats and ferals I've seen, I've only seen one black one, and weirdly enough, it was the same day I started writing this script, 26th of November 2023. And really, I don't know if it can be considered black or not, since it was in poor lighting conditions because it happened around 8 or 9 o'clock, and I could see some lighter patches here and there on its body. According to page 64 of Out of the Shadows, over 65% of witnesses reported the cats as black. 
And according to page 69, roughly 30% report not tabby, ginger, tortoise shell, or anything like that, but mountain lion coloration. This throws a massive wrench in the idea that the mega ferals can explain big cat sightings, unless it's the case that these mega ferals have also, for one reason or another, developed mountain lion-like colours. And speaking of comparisons with mountain lions, leopards, and jaguars, as Malcolm Smith details in Bunyips and Bigfoot's updated second edition, page 201, there's multiple differences between a feral cat and the typical big cats thrown up as the usual suspects. I'm not saying it's impossible to misidentify a feral as a puma, but there's still differences between them like body proportions, shape of their ears, and much more. According to the same page, the domestic cat has a tail length of 30 to 60% of a head to body length, while pumas are 50 to 70, and leopards are 60 to 100, while the jaguar has a similar tail in proportion to the feral cat. Domestic cats also have pointed ears, while ones on pumas are wider, lower, and further apart, and it's more or less the same for leopards and jaguars. The tails on the latter two cats also curl upwards, and the puma's tail is much fluffier than a domestic's. Pumas also have proportionally small heads, while jaguars and leopards, especially males, have fairly large, solidly built heads with squared off bottom jaws, practically the opposite of the delicate build of a domestic skull. I'd also like to mention some of these giant feral cat images I've seen Australian feral mega cats share our forced perspective. I do not recommend taking any of these images where the guy has the cat at arm's length from him and the camera is extremely close as evidence of giant ferals in Australia. I'm not denying they aren't growing larger, but it should be noted that quite a few of these supposed mega ferals are within range of larger domestic cats and their close relative, the wild cat. According to page 89 of Wild Cats of the World by Mel and Fiona Sunquist, a survey of European wild cats in France found males to range from 5 kilograms to 7.7 kilograms, for instance. And this survey was of 114 cats, by the way. Some of the mega ferals I've seen posted by Australian feral mega cats are around that weight. On his YouTube channel, as an example, he posted this video of what he described as a mini leopard, which he states in the description weighed 6.6 kilograms. That is within the range of European wildcats and domestic cat breeds. Kurt Angle's cat is a real freak of nature, not this supposed mini leopard as he described it. Others include this one, which has its legs stretched out, so of course it will look bigger, and then these two other images, which both have a rifle for scale. I remember showing my dad, who's a bit of a gun nut, some similar images, and he said he had some rifles that possessed barrels of around 26 inches, or 660 millimeters. Now, I am aware that not all guns have the same barrel length, but this is what I'll be using to estimate the size of these cats. And just as a reference on the normal length you can expect, according to page 201 of Bunyips and Bigfoot's updated second edition, male feral cats are usually around 448 to 740 millimeters for the head and body length according to the third edition of Mammals of Australia. So estimating the first cat next to a rifle, assuming the rifle has a 26 inch barrel, we're looking at somewhere between 26 and 27 inches or about 660 to 690 millimeters. However, the cat's head is facing downward, so it might be longer, say 28 inches, or about 710 millimeters. That is still within the normal range you can expect. Meanwhile, the second photo of a cat lying next to a rifle looks pretty much to be one-to-one -one with the barrel. So, assuming the barrel is 26 inches long, the cat is pretty much 26 inches long, excluding the tail. Compared to the barrel, these cats aren't very long, they just got bulk. And I don't know about you, but I think it would be hard to misidentify these bulky but fleet-footed feral tabby cats as sleek, slim, yet heavily built black or tawny big cats that move with the sort of stride that clearly illustrates a large and powerfully built predator. Another thing that blows a hole in the theory is one point Tony Healy and Paul Cropper made in Out of the Shadows, where on page 86 they show illustrations of a footprint from the Kangaroo Valley Panther next to a large domestic cat's print both shown at half their actual size. The Kangaroo Valley Panther's footprint is so large compared to the domestic cat's print that you could fit the domestic's print into one of the toe pads. Admittedly, Kurt Engel would shoot that feral he did over a decade later and show how big these ferals can truly get, but it's also worth mentioning the domestic cat's footprint shape is nothing like the Kangaroo Valley Panther's, and the Kangaroo Valley Panther's footprint isn't the only one. According to page 94 of Australian Big Cats, a footprint cast attributed to the Emmerville Panther was similar in size and shape to the footprints of Raja, a 9 foot long Bengal tiger that was housed at the Taronga Zoo during the 1958-1962 Emmerville Panther cat flap. 
The final argument I want to put forward against feral cats is that of livestock killings. Hundreds, possibly even thousands of livestock killings have been reported across the entire country to the point it's not even funny and should be seen as a massive issue. According to page 127 of Savage Shadows 2011 reprint, two brothers lost 600 sheep on two properties and in 1978 their lambing season dropped from 95% to 50% and this isn't a freak occurrence. There's been others reported in the quartering area of Western Australia where this happened and also in the eastern states of the country. According to page 292 of Mystery Cats of the World Revisited, a man by the name of Clive Berry on his property of Pretty Gully near Urala lost 340 sheep between 1956 and 1957, with more being killed in 1958, the same year the Emmerville Panther Cat Flap started. Some might cry that megaferals could kill some smaller sheep, but that leads me to ask what the hell made the footprints attributed to the Kangaroo Valley Panther and Emmerville Panther mentioned earlier. No way even a megaferal made those prints. On page 205 of, you guessed it, Bunyips and Bigfoot's updated second edition, Malcolm Smith also mentions a dead horse found on a property south of Brisbane in December of 1982 that was covered in claw marks on its neck, left shoulder and abdomen no dog could do. And it's very doubtful even mega ferals like Kurt Engel's cat could or would take on a horse. This is also ignoring three sheep found dead on the same night, drowned in two streams and covered in puncture marks on a neighbouring property, though I imagine from the description given that the sheep were killed by dogs. Overall, unless you want to make yourself look stupid by saying that feral cats have developed similar size, footprint shape, and prey preferences to that of the largest cat species alive today, capable of taking down large bovids the size of cars, I recommend you do not open your mouth. Conclusion. I think it's safe to summarise the feral cat theory as being a yes and no answer to the Australian alien big cat question. Brief glimpses and prolonged sightings in low light conditions alongside a lot of supposed footage and images of ABCs can be explained away as nothing more than feral cats. However, footprint casts the size of Bengal tigers, the colorations, livestock killings and prolonged sightings in decent or great lighting conditions with several of them being made by multiple people or people who've had experience with with big cats or grown up in areas where they are native animals means it's not an easy answers to all problems solution. Really, all the evidence I've shown to refute the feral cat theory doesn't just refute it, but actually gives significant backing to the idea that there are black panthers or pumas roaming the country. And this is without going into detail about alleged big cat scats, strange claw marks on trees, and probably other lines of evidence I'm not aware of. And that will be all for today. I hope to make a larger video, separate from the iceberg video, talking about Australia's alien big cats in what I believe the internet would refer to as autistic levels of detail from what I've seen of large and highly detailed videos on other subjects. But until that point comes, hopefully this video will do for now. Hopefully you liked, shared and subscribed, and I'll see you next time I upload. Some might bring up the Simpson and Gibson desert cats mentioned earlier, but barely anyone lives in those areas, and quite a majority of...